process cost system is the second basic type of accounting costing system, the first being job order cost. There are a lot of similarities between a job order cost and a process cost system, but there are some differences as well and some significant ones. Process cost system would be used by a company that manufactures a uniform or very similar product. So we're making the same thing day in, day out. It's the same product. One product is no different than the next. So we don't really have to keep up with costs separately. Like we talked about with job order costing, these are very different jobs. The products themselves are very individualized or specialized. With a process cost system, that's not the case. We don't need to keep a job cost sheet, for instance, for each order, because each order is the same thing. So we're going to track costs a little differently. Now, as far as manufacturing costs are concerned, we still have the same three manufacturing costs. We have direct labor, we have direct materials, and we have manufacturing overhead. Also, these are still accounted for in the same ways. When we have materials that we purchase, we're going to debit that to that raw materials inventory account. When we are getting ready to use those materials in production, we're going to requisition those materials. We're going to send them into production. The direct materials are going to get debited to the work in process account, and the indirect materials are going to be debited to the manufacturing overhead account. Again, labor is very similar. When we have labor, that direct labor is going to be put into or debited the work in process inventory account, and the indirect labor is going to be added to or debited to the manufacturing overhead account. Now, manufacturing overhead, however, is different between the two costing systems. In job order costing, we talked about using a predetermined factory overhead rate, and that's how we would allocate out those costs. Now, both systems are similar in the fact that actual manufacturing overhead costs are debited to that manufacturing overhead account. So we have utilities, we have that indirect materials, indirect labor, all those other examples that we could use for manufacturing overhead. When we actually have those incurred, those are going to be debited to the manufacturing overhead account. The application of manufacturing overhead is handled very differently. Again, with job order costing, we are looking at specific jobs or orders and we're tracking those on job cost sheets. So we know exactly how much we have of this and of that and how much materials went on that and how much labor. But in a process costing system, everything's the same. So we're not tracking one specific item. And maybe we're making number two pencils. That's all our factory makes all day long. Every pencil is the exact same. I don't need to run a job cost sheet for each pencil because at the end of the day, everything I made is the same. So my costs can be allocated differently with regard to manufacturing overhead. We're going to look at kind of a four-step process to accounting for and allocating out our manufacturing overhead costs. Um, I'll wait for the details on that and provide that in another segment in the course. But just know for now, the allocation of these are very different than the job order costing system. Now, we still allocate them and we will credit and the manufacturing overhead when we apply those costs and we'll debit work in process when we do apply them to those products that we are manufacturing. Another big difference deals with the work in process inventory account itself. For a process costing system, we will have multiple work in process accounts because, as I said, our allocation of costs is different, not only manufacturing overhead, but also all of our costing is different because we're not doing this on an individual basis for each job or order. Everything's the same. So how we allocate those costs is by departments instead of by jobs. So each different function or department or process will have its own way to cost and will cost those out in each of these. So let's say that you have a painting department and a fabrication department, for instance. Well, each of those departments will have its own work in process account and will track costs as it moves through each department. That's a big difference that we'll see between the two systems. So let's say this is the first department, the painting department. Um, when we apply direct materials in, we apply direct labor, it will be added in or debited to this account. When we apply factory overhead, it will be added in or debited to this account. When we're done with the products in this department, they're not finished yet, we're just done with them in this department. They're going to move to the next department for the next step or stage of production. We're going to credit them or take them out of this work in process account 
and they're going to move to the next work in process account. So you'll debit this account for all of those costs that are moving. They're finished in one department. We add up all those costs, know how much those are, and then we put them into this work in process. Credit the prior, and we debit this one, the new one that they're coming into. Then we'll do whatever our work is here. If this was used fabrication as an example, if this was the fabrication department, we would do that process. We'd apply costs. Again, we would apply factory overhead for this specific department and then we could move those on. Again, we could have many multiple, many multiple, sorry, we could have many work in process accounts. Just depends on how many functions or departments that you're working with in your production process. When you get to the end of that line of multiple departments and you're finally totally finished, you have a final product, then we're going to take it out of that last work in process account and it will go to finished goods inventory. One other thing to mention before I keep on going is some companies actually choose to not only do multiple work and process accounts, but they'll also do multiple manufacturing overhead accounts and dedicate one for each department. So just as you have, let's say, three departments and you have three work and process accounts, you could also see three manufacturing overhead accounts. Now, some factories choose not to do that. Some of them will still only use one manufacturing overhead account for the entire process, but you will always see multiple work in process accounts for each stage or department. And once we have finished it, again, it will come into the finished goods inventory. We'll debit it for that total cost and it'll hang out there until we sell it. Hopefully not too long and the name of the game is to have some sales and some profits. So we're hoping that that doesn't take too long. Once that happens and we sell those goods, we'll credit finished goods inventory and we'll add those in and debit cost of goods sold. And that explains our flow of costs through a process cost system.